It's the John and Ken Show. John Cobelt and Ken Shampoo, KFI AM640. All right, well, let's get right to it. We have a Harvey Weinstein accuser. Lauren Savan, who works uh, now for uh, Channel 11. Uh, years ago, I was working in New York for a New York for a Long Island cable news channel called News 12. And this is the story that included the potted plant. And then later, later on, the, the saucepan, saucepan with somebody else telling that part of the story. And uh, this she, has happened at a New York club, a Manhattan hotspot called Social East End. It was 10 years ago. Lauren, how are you? Hi, guys. How are you? Um, oh, we're great. We're good. Thank you for taking the time to come on. Obviously, you've told this story a lot, but uh, for our audience, uh, take us through it. Yeah, I mean, I have told this story a lot. I've told it throughout the years to t- dozens of people, but um, it's, it's much more difficult to tell the story on the air um, just because of its lewdness. You know, I, I was working as a local news anchor, as you mentioned, in New York 10 years ago. I joined a girlfriend out at night. Um, a dinner party turned into kind of a, a later night lounge club uh, situation at Socialista. And uh, I had been chatting with Harvey Weinstein, who I was sat next to at dinner. And he was lovely, chatty. But, you know, we talked about politics and history and, you know, all of these accounts. Women talk about how he makes them feel important, how he, you know, talks about their careers and working with them. And, and that's kind of his lure. I mean, he really does make you feel interesting. Um, and so when he asked me if I wanted to see a tour of this restaurant that he claimed to be an owner of, I said, uh, sure, why not? Um, it was only after, um, we went downstairs to see the kitchen and the restaurant that I realized, oh, this is a bad idea. There's no one down here. So you, you did not get any uncomfortable feeling until you were downstairs with him because some people hit you right away as being off. Right. Uh, but, right. And I'm, I mean, I'd like to say, you know, I, I considered myself a savvy girl. I lived in New York City for 12 years. I, I'd like to think that I would have, you know, picked up on anything, uh, anything like that. And yet I didn't. He just seems, you know, really lovely and nice and nothing inappropriate. Would you describe him as our conversation? Yeah. Would you describe him as charming or? Um, I don't know if charming is the word. Like I didn't get any kind of flirtatious vibe. It was very, um, just a serious conversation about news and politics. And we both discussed how much we loved history. And he told me he was working on a presidential history um, piece, the series. And we talked about that. And, you know, he seemed um, really, uh, you know, he, he kept saying like, wow, I can't believe you know all that stuff. You know, most people don't this and most people don't know that. So I felt flattered in the sense that I you know, felt like I was holding my own with a Hollywood mogul at a, at a random dinner party. And of course it made me feel good you know i was a local news anchor and i was like desperate to be taken seriously at the time yeah so, I, I was, in that in that way he was charming yeah was there anything in the conversation though that led him or led you to want to see the kitchen i didn't really get that part or so we were in this nightclub which was at the time it was a new york hotspot it was kind of difficult to get into you had to know someone that kind of thing um and i had never i don't think i had ever been there before that night and um he said uh did you know I'm one of the owners of this place? I said, no, I didn't. You know, I've always wanted to come here. I didn't, I didn't know anyone. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm in the owner. And um, downstairs is a whole restaurant. And you want to come? Let me show you the restaurant. Let me show you the kitchen. And so it seemed completely innocuous. I was like, oh, okay, no, I've never seen the restaurant. Keep in mind, I thought it was like a kitchen, a staffed kitchen where people were cooking or doing things. <laughs> like, I didn't know it was an empty, dark room. Well, how late was it? It was pretty late. I mean, it was late at night, but you know, New York City. I mean, oh, yeah, it keeps going on all night long. So yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't like you know, lights out at eleven. All right. So he takes you into the the empty kitchen. You said red flag goes off in your head, huh? Yeah, and I I was quickly like, okay, I've seen it. Let's, let's go back upstairs. You know, kind of intimating that I wasn't I wasn't really comfortable down there. Um, but he's like, no, 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 no. You have to go through. You have to walk through. You have to see the whole place. And once we walk through the kitchen to the back, it's I realize like you're kind of trapped in like this, you know, this area by the bathrooms where it's a dead end. So um, at that point, he just leaned in to kiss me, and I I politely <laughs> declined, and I said, "I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. I'm in a relationship. I'm not, you know, interested in anything else." Um, and I kind of intimated that I was ready to go back upstairs, and that's when he kind of blocked my exit and and told me to stand there and be quiet. And then he performed. Yeah. And then he, you know, exposed himself and proceeded to masturbate while I was standing there. 
there, and you were trapped. You didn't feel like you could make a move to get out of the way there, huh? Well, to be clear, I mean, I'm sure if my life was threatened, I would have made moves to get out. But, you know, it's I don't know what the normal reaction you're supposed to have to that situation happening. It's it was stunning. kind of yeah. shocking. You're standing there. You can't believe what you're witnessing. So my first impulse wasn't to, like, kick him in the, you know, groin and run. It was just like, what is going on? Like, your mind is just trying to process what the heck is happening. Did you say anything? Well, he told me to be quiet, which was kind of you know, jarring. And I continued to talk. I go, what do you mean be quiet? And then I saw what he was doing. And I will tell you that did shut me up. I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever prepared for that. So how did you get out of there? When he finished his business, I said to him, are we done here? Can I go? And he said, yes, let's both go. And he you know, zipped himself up and walked back through the kitchen. And at that point, my girlfriend had been looking for me. So she came downstairs looking for me and I grabbed her by the arm and I said, we're going to go. Bye. And we ran out. So to him, it was like nothing happened. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's why I knew for years in the back of my mind that this was definitely not the first time he's pulled something like that. I'm definitely not the only one this happens to. And, and because he seemed to know the layout so well in that kitchen, I'm sure there were other victims in that specific place. And you heard the saucepan story. Yeah. I mean, I talked to that club owner after he came out with his story, you know, kind of just to thank him because Harvey had asked him to lie for him. And he knew that that was wrong. And he knew that I was probably telling the truth because he had his own account of of a night just like that. He he must must have taken another woman down there. That's what my that's what I believe. I believe that I was not the only one. I believe who knows how many inanimate objects had been defiled in that kitchen.